is the last missile deke. Three rebels approaching. You've got to get out of there. I know, Quay. You've got two minutes. I know. You have to put some distance between you and those missiles before they blow. No kidding, Quay. On you. I realize that, Quay. Can I switch this radio to some music, please? Now you've got three Jeeps after you, Deke. Oh, Quay! I sure love a parade. something about it. Scratch one missile plant. Good work, Deke. I don't suppose you heard Quay yapping at me while I was trying to get out of there. Yeah, I heard her. Would you mind telling your daughter to lighten up while I'm fighting for my life? You tell her. On second thought, never mind. I've tried verbal sparring with Quay. I'm tired of losing. I think that's a smart move.
Hey, smile, boys. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go back to work. Thank you, Mr. President. Congratulations again, and uh, keep up the good work, all right? Yeah, okay. Thanks, Mr. President. So long. Yes, Quay. We have located and neutralized Saddam's missile storage in West Africa. Excellent news. Thank you. Yes, sir. I just don't see the president giving into this terrorist Rashid. What is it with these Arabs anyway? I mean, Rashid is threatening the president. He's killing Americans. I say we nuke him and the countries who support him, huh, professors? Uh, I think I'm gonna let you handle that one, Joshua. Well, sit down, Rob, and I'll try to answer that question. Yes. Uh, Rob seems to think that we should uh, nuke all countries that support terrorism. But we have to remember that we can't condemn all Arabs for the actions of a few. Just like we can't condemn all Americans for the actions of men, say, like Tim McVeigh. Remember, there's over one billion Muslims spread over 40 countries and five continents. And this radical fundamentalist element makes up only a small percentage. In fact, 0.01%. Look at what that one in 10 million are doing. I mean, what is it with that Rashid? Here in America, we believe in religious freedom, that all religions can coexist together. But to men like Fadal Rashid, there's only one way to believe, one way to worship, their way. And if you don't, you're an enemy. It's called the Jihad, the Holy War. All right, keep your head in there, TC. Come on, TC, hang in there, baby. This slump puts you in a negative frame of mind, okay? Why don't you just relax, man? Shake it off, okay? Just relax, focus, and visualize. Uh, I don't know what you mean, coach. Let me see the bat. and visualize. In your mind's eye, just see yourself swinging the bat, making contact. And then the ball sailing over the fence. All right? Think you can do that? I'll try. Right, Come on. Here we go, TC. Come on. Relax. Focus. Visualize. Coach? Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> Where'd you learn that? TC, if I told you that, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> Take a few more. Good job, buddy. Come on. Jack. I'm sorry to pull you away from the Press Association dinner, but we've got a situation here. No apologies necessary. Well, you just hurry back. After all, you're the man they came to see. Where do you when you're around? They only see you. 
I've never been one to categorize the press as a pack of hounds, but they sure do eat like one. Well, they're gonna howl like one, too, if you don't get back for coffee. Well, they'll be on to dessert before they even know I'm gone. What do we have here? I'm afraid that our worst fears have been realized, Mr. President. The American Embassy in Nairobi. 29 dead, 195 wounded. Fort Collins, Riyadh. 16 dead, 38 wounded. The USS Cole in the Gulf of Aden, a suicide mission, 16 dead, 21 wounded. The World Trade Center, New York City, seven dead, 66 wounded. These are the men my agents apprehended for the Trade Center bombing. Three of Fadal Rashid's top lieutenants. I've been briefed on all these people. What's your point? We're getting to it, Mr. President. Please bear with us. The mastermind himself, Fadal Rashid. Mr. President, Rashid meant what he said about escalating the terrorist attacks unless we released his three top lieutenants. I know he's serious, Philip, but I will never give in to his threats. You think with a $5 million reward, someone would turn him in? Oh, we'll get him, Jack. It's just a matter of time. But I'm still waiting for the reason you brought me in here. Well, Mr. President, I received a troubling phone call this evening from my Russian counterpart. It seems that there's a substantial amount of plutonium that's missing from their nuclear stores, along with several devices that could be used to construct a nuclear weapon. Are you telling me Rashid has the bomb? That's what we're afraid of, Mr. President. I'll call NATO. Just make sure it doesn't wind up on American soil. So the rumors are true. You got the last surviving artifacts out of Afghanistan. They were rescued from the Kabul Museum literally hours before the Taliban stormed the building and smashed what was left. The Taliban? The rebel forces who are presently in control of most of Afghanistan. So who did the rescuing? I'm sorry, I can't divulge that. If the Taliban were to learn their identities, they would be hunted down and killed. So why are they destroying everything? They believe the statues have been used as idols and deities by non-believers. Well, congratulations, Dr. Everett. It's beautiful. Thank you. Uh... Day tonight? Man's gotta take a night off sometime. <laughs> How's the coaching job going? Oh, it's great. I love it. I mean, once in a while you gotta show the troops you can get the job done. And I must say, I acquitted myself rather nicely today. Meaning what? Meaning I hit this bomb out of the parkway, must have been 430 feet. <laughs> Is that supposed to impress me? Well, impress me. I'm just saying if you got it. Oh, I know. You got it. You said it, not me. I'll tell you what you've got, Mr. Slater. You've got a problem, an ego problem. And you better get it under control. Ow. I was just playing. What? What did I say? Maybe a little too much.
we have the plutonium. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm sorry, Deke. I have to leave tonight. This is the most important modeling assignment of my career. I know, I know. But Dallas will be such a lonely city without you. And so will I. Well, I didn't know you cared so much. Barbara, of course I care. <laughs> Thought of you walking down the Champs-Élysées on some moonlit night was that me. Why, it is nauseating. <laughs> I cannot stand it. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah. It's time. Now? Yes. Okay. Listen, I have to go. I'm very sorry. You have a lovely trip. This will cover everything. And good luck. Ready? Let her rip. If you're just gonna go halfway, you're not saying yes. If you're not in the game to win, if you don't fight for the gold, just walk away. I'm gonna give it a go. Kidding? Nope. Now that you can't see, you're gonna have to rely on your other senses. Great. The five senses doing the job of six. If you don't take it strong, ready? Yeah. Girl, don't know your jack, and it all comes down to you. If you got what it takes to make it work. That hurts! That's the idea. Ah. Concentrate with your mind's eye, Deke. Ah. Feel and sense the ball coming. Okay. Ow. You couldn't get any softer balls? Actually, I tried to find harder ones. <laughs> Thank you, Quay. I love you, too. Ridiculous. I can't do this. Dick, you have to let these other senses work for you. Having this ability can save your life. It has mine many times. Okay? Yes, sir. Would you like a try? Dick, I've been doing that since I was five.
Very impressive, Ali. Where did you ever learn such skills? I've lived here in Chicago for 10 years now. Your father, Rashid, he paid for my education. A PhD in applied physics from Northwestern. The Americans. They are very good at training their enemies to destroy them. Ten years is a long time, Ali. It is a long time to resist the temptations of American society. I knew one day I'd be called upon to serve a greater good. To serve Allah. It is finished. How does it work? Very simple. You first activate the initiator. It's okay, Abir. The device is not armed. Then you set the timer. There. My father will be pleased. A thousand apologies, Amir. They are ready for you now. Your son is becoming a true hero of Islam, Amir. Mm. Yes. Amir is my shining light. He is our future. We are only eight years into my hundred-year plan. We must depend on our youth to complete the will. Have a laugh. Are you ready? Yes, Amir. You may begin at any time. This is a message for the President of the United States. You are the leader of an arrogant and corrupt empire. An evil society of infidels and sinners. A nation that will be held responsible for its own destruction. I have given you repeated warnings to get out of the Gulf of Aden, out of Saudi Arabia, out of all lands of those faithful to Islam. Now you are persecuting three of our Islamic martyrs in New York City. I have one last warning for President Mayfield. Release our men. Release them immediately. Or an American city will be consumed in a nuclear fire. Please understand we're talking about a nuclear device that can fit inside a suitcase. This is what we feared most with the breakup of the Soviet Union, that the plutonium and the bomb-making equipment could go out into the free market. And we know that Rashid can certainly afford it. Okay, people. Obviously, we have to keep a tight lid on this. If this information gets out, the ramifications could be disastrous. Steve, what's the FBI doing about this? Mr. President, we are literally turning the country upside down and inside out trying to find that bomb, if there is one. Any suggestions? We could call his bluff, Mr. President. I don't think that's an option, Philip. We could release his men, shift them back to Afghanistan, 
There's no guarantee that Rashid wouldn't demand other concessions. If that bomb is in the United States, he can demand anything he wants. Which brings us to our military option. Well, we have reliable intelligence on the location of Rashid's compound in Afghanistan. Well, that's all well and good, but that dog doesn't hunt if he's not in the compound. Oh, he's there, all right, Mr. President. How do we know that for sure? He uses a satellite phone. So every time he makes a call, our keyhole one can read his location with pinpoint accuracy. His conversation is scrambled, but voice ident lets us know that it's him. He's there, and he's there now. What about a snatch and grab? He's got his honor guard and the Taliban protecting him. It'd be a suicide mission. What do we have in the area? The USS Nimitz in the Gulf of Oman. The Eisenhower's on station off Kuwait. We can scramble a pair of F-15s and send some serious ordnance right down Rashid's windpipe. Is that our best option, Mr. President? Senator, this man is threatening millions of Americans. His hundred-year plan is to turn the entire planet into an Islamic empire. Without Rashid's leadership, his followers would be left in complete disarray. They'll start making mistakes, the kind of mistakes that could lead us to the bomb before it's set off. Do I have a go order, Mr. President? Warren, I hate to put you on the spot, but uh, what are our chances for optimum success? The element of surprise, the latest generation of smart bomb. Confidence is high. Got to go, Warren. a response from the American president, Amir. He has responded. I don't understand. Life is like this game, Abdullah. I move a piece. Now the president must move a piece. He has no choice. I have forced his hand. You see? Okay, Bobcat, get close. Roger that, Red Dog. Proceeding with bombing run. Target acquired. Yes, Mr. President. I see. I understand. Active inactivity? Let me try to explain it this way. 
Let's compare doing nothing to a pause in music. A pause is not the lack of music. It's an integral part of the composition. The space between the notes is also music. And the masters of good phrasing are like, let's say, a conductor leading an orchestra. So what you're saying, Professor, is that meaningful pause helps you take stock of where you are? Very good, Rob. I'm gonna have to cut this class short. Everyone's dismissed. All right, guys, let's get one. Doc, I got a family emergency. I gotta go, okay? Take over, then go, thanks. Let's get two, fellas. So Rashid's going nuclear and he has a bomb in one of our cities. What is he after? He wants a terrorist who bombed the World Trade Center, freed and sent back to Afghanistan. And what's our mission? Best case scenario, infiltrate his compound, capture Rashid and bring him back into the United States. Worst case scenario, terminate him without prejudice. Where can we find him? I've got it all right here. location device now. Inserting ID tracker. Tracker inserted. away. Good next, sir. Copy that. of contact, waiting for the satellite to get back into position. How long? 
60 seconds until satellite uplink is complete. Almost in position. Ten seconds. Do you read me? I read you. You're approaching the prayer room. Copy. On your left, a room unoccupied. Okay, I'm reading an active satellite phone in the room down the hall to your left. Outside the room, there are three men, one man inside. There's no one here. You're right on top of them. Update satellite position information and re-establish the feed. I should have it back any second now. We're back up. There he is. 
I'm tracking the package now, Joshua, and I have Rasheen. Package, Joshua. How long does this drug last? Three hours. I'm reading all kinds of radio traffic at Rashid's compound. They're mobilizing, Deke. Copy that. Two vehicles and a group of men headed your way. I copy. I see them. Two jeeps coming my way. Captain, prepare to service in two minutes. Roger that. Over and out. There's the Sea Ray. Right on time. You're in for a treat, Rashid. You're gonna get to take a trip on a genuine American nuclear submarine. This is all over me, Jack. I want to know how in the world we managed to pull off the capture of Fadal Rashid. Sorry, Andy, you're gonna have to stonewall. This was a covert operation. There's no way we can provide details without compromising national security. Well, they're not gonna like that. Since when have they liked anything we've done? Look, Andy, I hate to hang out to dry, but that's the way we've got to play this. All right, Jack. The president will be with you in just a moment, Mr. Stanton. Thank you for coming, Mr. Ambassador. I thought it was a very productive meeting. Yes, I'll let you know, sir. Jack. Mr. President, there are 46 federal agencies that handle terrorism. I've checked with all 46, and no one claims responsibility for Rashid's abduction. Are you telling me there's a 47th I don't know about? No, I'm not, Jack. Oh, come on, Adam. Are you going to tell me how in God's name you captured Rashid? I promise you it will not leave this room. It won't leave this room because I'm not going to tell you. Let's leave it at that. But Adam. Jack, don't press me. Fair enough, Mr. President. Our forces are on full alert and ready for any retaliatory actions from Rashid's people. What about the location of the bomb? Still working on that. We've got to work harder, Jack. Yes, Mr. President. 
Ever since Rashid's indictment in absentia, I've been preparing a list of judges I believe are qualified to preside over his trial. Who's on the short list? Kaminsky in Indiana, Dolan in California, and Taylor in Texas. I know Taylor. He's a Middle East scholar. Wrote a book on the Islamic fundamentalist revolution. He knows the terrain very well. He's perfect. So we'll go with Taylor. Can he clear his calendar? For you, Mr. President? Absolutely. Good work, Jack. How's your wife? The chemo treatments have been pretty rough on her, but you know Susan. She's a fighter. Send her my best. Tell her that Lydia and I are praying for her. Thank you, Adam. She'll appreciate that. Mr. Rashid, this is Attorney General Philip Kasnar. Let's get right to the point, shall we? Mr. Rashid, we're prosecuting you on 75 counts of murder, multiple counts of terrorism, and transporting weapons of mass destruction over international borders. With all due respect, Mr. Kasnar, my client has never been successfully tied to any act of terrorism here or anywhere in the world. He is the target of an international witch hunt, and we vehemently protest his illegal kidnapping and detention. Mr. Rashid is a political What prisoner. does your president want? It's very simple, Mr. Rashid. The United States will not seek the death penalty if, and only if, you give us the location of the nuclear device. Nuclear device? You signed an oath, Mr. Ryan. Nothing you hear in this room leaves this room. Save the histrionics for the jury, Counselor. You have my word on it. And of course, I am to receive a fair trial. In accordance with the laws of our land, yes, you will. Your land? <laughs> Mr. Kasnar, you are an Arab, and you have betrayed your true land for an evil nation of idolaters. Would you excuse us, please? Now, wait a minute. Go. Kasnar, the Kasnar clan, hmm? is from the Jabal Shar. You bring shame to their name, my friend. No, 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 no. You are the one who brings shame, killing innocent people in the name of Allah. No, no, no. You have been blinded by wealth and materialism. You have turned your back on Allah. No, Mr. Rashid. The teachings of Allah are about peace not violence. The Quran tells us, I do not serve what you worship, and you do not serve what I worship. You have your own religion, and I have mine. That is religious tolerance, Mr. Rashid. Now, did you bring a nuclear device into the United States? Yes. I did. And Mr. Kasnar, when we have won this holy war, we will have traitors like you dragged through the streets with their limbs torn from their bodies. That will be quite difficult to do from death row, Mr. Rashid. Good day. I agree to your president's demand. But I swear by Allah that I do not know the location of this nuclear weapon. How can you find it? The only way I can reach the men who guard this device is by making a televised public statement. I'll get back to you. Ikruzi, Bayad Jovati. Allah Rubedi. Allah Adme Hubro Emayat Mikone. Hi. Hello. It's a lovely evening, isn't it? 
There's something I... I want to tell you. Yeah? We did a really good job. I'm sorry, what was that? I don't think I heard you correctly. I said you did a really good job, Deke. Oh, no. See, that wasn't that hard, was it? What do you mean? Well, I mean, you have to admit, there's been quite a bit of refrigerated air between us lately. I'm a professional. Well, I know. So am I, Quay. But sometimes you gotta just lighten up a little bit. I mean, what's life without, without some humor in it? Don't think that I didn't hear the concern in your voice when Rashid's men started closing in, either. I was concerned for the mission. <laughs> you don't have to be a genius or a NASCAR driver, a game show host on MTV, or the winner of Survivor. You don't have to take me on a credit card trip to Toyland or dance just like a member of some pretty boy or band. You don't need the looks, some Latin movie star. Okay. Just look at me the right way. nothing inflammatory in Rashid's speech. We've gone over the transcript several times, Mr. President. We feel there's nothing provocative in his statement. Besides, it's time delayed. Many of you know my face, but few of you have heard my voice. Please do not preconceive who I am or what I believe. The American people are no more responsible for the American government's actions than are the innocent people of Islam who have died in a hail of bombs in Pakistan, in Iraq, in Palestine, in all the lands of Islam. So today, I make a promise to the American people. We will bring you no more suffering. And to my own followers, my faithful followers, I have a message, a message of great importance. We must travel a new path, a path of enlightenment, a path of ultimate peace, a path that brings the eternal fire of friendship close to my heart. Do not weep for me, for Allah has blessed me, and justice will be done. This tape from Badal Rashid was received in the State Department earlier. Your father wants us to move the bomb from Chicago to Dallas, close to him, and set it off. I heard what he said. Hey, Dad. What's wrong? What's going on? 
Rashid wants the bomb moved to Dallas. He intends to set it off. You got all that from what? Rashid's statement? Yeah, watch. We must travel a new path. That means his plans have changed. A path of enlightenment, a path of ultimate peace, a path that brings the eternal fire of friendship close to my heart. The fire's the bomb, and he wants the bomb moved closer to his heart. Dallas. Exactly. How do you know that he wants to set it off? Do not weep for me, for Allah has blessed me. And justice will be done. Rashid wants to be remembered as a martyr. He plans to die in the explosion. Quay, get the president on the phone. You got it. A path that brings the eternal fire of friendship close to my heart. He's telling his people to take the bomb to Dallas. He doesn't want a deal. He wants to be a martyr. Are you sure, Mr. President? Yes, I am sure. Find the bomb. Excuse me, Mr. President. Mrs. Mayfield is here. Send her in. Jack. General. Lydia. Ma'am. Are you going to tell me what's going on? In reference to what? In reference to the fact that you haven't slept in 24 hours. No, matters of state. Adam Mayfield, you are the worst liar in this country. That's what got you elected. <laughs> I thought we were partners. I thought we shared everything. I don't want to share this with you, Lydia. I don't want to share it with anyone. It's that bad, huh? Yes, it's that bad. And you have to tell me, Adam. Fadal Rashida smuggled a nuclear bomb into the country. And he plans to detonate it. Oh, my God. What's up? You're going to Chicago. Chicago? I found a police report in the files. There was a break-in at the Chicago Museum. Buddhist statues were destroyed by what the police believed to be a pro-Taliban faction. Ah. And? I mean, I don't get it. Well, they only smashed two of them. If it was the Taliban, they would have smashed them all. So you think that's how they're getting the plutonium into the country? And that's why you're going there. To see if I'm right. Let's go, Deke. That's what you're doing. So, gentlemen, what can I do for you? Dr. Everett, can you describe your contact from Afghanistan? Uh, he looked like a typical Saudi businessman. Uh, dark hair, average height, in his 20s. He did have a distinctive scar on his left eye. Oh, really? OK, thank you. Thank you. You recognized Dr. Everett's contact, didn't you? Yeah. Abir Rashid. Fadal Rashid's son. Yep. Spectrum analyzers giving us a plutonium spike. Gotta hand it to Quay. They definitely transported it in these statues. Now that we know that, we can track them.
puta madre. You know, Abir, the closer I get to Allah, the more peaceful I become. There are no more questions. A great sense of quiet fills me. It's close to perfection, my friend. Perfection. I'll be sitting in a tent in Afghanistan next to my father, watching a report of the explosion on CNN. What are you talking about? You heard what he said. Of course I heard what he said. We all did. The whole world did. He said, bring the eternal fire close to my heart. Will it be written that Ali Faisal was responsible for the death of Fadal Rashid? No, it will be written that I obeyed the word of Allah. We are not talking about Allah. We're talking about my father. And our leader. On this mission, Ali, I am your leader. I must rescue him. Pull him from the hands of the infidels. And then you may detonate the bomb. Rescue him? When did that become an option? Now. Today. And it is not an option. That is an order. Hassan! Stay with the bomb. What have we got? I downloaded the Chicago telemetry from a Ford satellite from the time of the break-in at the museum. I tracked a vehicle to an electronic store, but they left within 48 hours, headed south. Chicago must have been their original target until Rashid's press conference changed their plans. Well, I sent the FBI to the electronic store, and they came up with plutonium traces. That means the van's somewhere in Dallas. With the bomb. <laughs> Rashid told us to activate the bomb. I demand you let me set it now. I take my orders from Abir, not from you. vehicle's final location. An open field outside of Dallas, parked in what looks like a barn. Now, the satellite footage shows that nothing was taken out of the van, so the bomb must still be in it. Have the FBI check it out. clean. No bomb and no a beer. I would have sworn that nuclear device was in that van. Somehow we missed something. Quay, run the tape back to where the van first entered the Dallas city limits.
Okay, fast forward. What's causing those jumps in the picture? Well, there's an occasional gap in the telemetry. The Fort satellite has to recalibrate its optical sensors on a regular basis. Okay, stop it. Run it back to where that van first entered the overpass. Regular speed. Okay, stop. It was under the overpass too long. You're right. They must have stopped. Quay, let's take a look at the traffic going in the opposite direction. At the same time, the van entered the overpass. Okay, hold it. The tanker stopped at the same time the van did. They switched the bomb to the tanker truck while it was under the overpass. Okay, zoom in on the tanker. Okay. Talford Quad D. Here we get. Okay, here we go. I got a profile on the CEO of Talford Quadi Oil Company. Reza Quadi, naturalized citizen of the United States, born in Saudi Arabia, made his fortune at Venue Oil before he formed his own company, funded the Taliban during the Afghanistan war against the Soviets. Okay, where's the refinery? Three miles due south of Dallas. I'll get the schematics. Let's get ready, Dick. Pfizer. The FBI is moving my father to the courthouse at 6 in the morning. We will set the bomb for noon. We will all meet at the airfield. truck around? That refinery may interfere with some of our communications. I'm aware of that. Speaking of communications, don't you think you should go out and give Deke a little encouragement? You've been a little bit tough on him lately. I've been as tough as I've needed to be. I just wish he was a little more like you, that's all. I appreciate that, honey, but Deke's his own man. And if I may say so myself, he's a pretty special guy. Give me a second. Okay. If you get to the bomb before Joshua does, remember the order. Disengage the main B-bus terminal, then secondaries C and D. Then primaries A and B, I got it. And do yourself a favor, minimize your gunfire. I mean, one stray bullet in that refinery and... I get the I... picture. Quay, I got it. I guess you're all set then. Yep. Sometimes I can be a little too much of a perfectionist. No, that's not quite. You're a professional, and I'm a professional. Okay, and from one professional to another, how about a little kiss before I go? For luck. Right here. Come on. I give up. I I'm a good kisser, really. The only people up are you and I and the terrorists. Did you know it was two years ago today that you recruited me? No, I didn't. Yeah. 
I'll never forget our first mission. I remember thinking to myself, this is definitely for men with short lifespans. How do you feel now? Well, I have to say the training that you've put me through has been an incredible experience, Joshua. You got me doing things that I, I never thought were humanly possible. Human limitations are only in our minds, Deke. Think about it. Before the Wright brothers, who would have ever conceived of us traveling by air, much less landing on the moon? Yeah. Well, that's what you've done for me. You've made me believe anything's possible. And now I believe my life has true meaning. To be in the presence, man. Thank you. You earned it. Let's go find this bomb, huh? Century North Side. One man on your level, Deke, heading your way. Joshua, coming up close, one man on your left. One man heading straight for you. Deke, coming up close, two men on your left.
spike in the storage tanks. You've got to get that fire out. Tank levels are going critical. It's gonna blow if you don't get that fire out now. Feel safe. You're gonna have to disarm it from the inside. Deke, do you read me? Jock Deke, speak. Wait. She must be freaking out. Read me. Yeah. Joshua, Deke? Can you read me? Quay, do you copy? Jock Deke. Quay. Deke. This is Deke and Joshua. Do you copy? Deke. Quay. Joshua, Deke, do you I... read me? Quay, I read you. We read you. We're okay. Everything's okay. Oh, thank God. Quay, we've secured the bomb. Call in the FBI. Did you get Rashid's son? No. He wasn't here. But I think I know where he is.
What are you doing? You disobeyed me. I could not let you die. When will the nuclear device explode? Noon today. One of us must live to lead our people. Allah's work will be done. Go, go! and we will all die. And there is nothing you can do about it. Sorry to disappoint you, Rashid. But your nuclear device has been disarmed. detail escorting the international terrorist Fadal Rashid came under heavy attack this morning by members of his terrorist organization who are trying to free him from American custody. Seven special agents of the FBI lost their lives in the line of duty. Rashid and his son Abir were quickly apprehended and taken into custody. Our hearts go out to the families of the fallen agents. Their sacrifice will not be forgotten. Thank you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Mr. Hunter. Thank you. I know for a fact that the FBI had nothing to do with capturing Rashid and Abir. Well, is that a fact, Mr. Stein? I know, I know. Don't go there. I knew there was a reason you graduated first in our class at Harvard, Jack. <laughs> now? If you'll excuse us, Jack, my husband is going to get some much-needed rest. The boss has spoken. <laughs> Rashid and Abir of Crimes Against Humanity. Sentencing will be in two weeks. Hello. Barbara. Back from Paris already? Tonight? I love the sound of that. Can't wait to see you. Yes, Mr. President. Hold on just a second, Barbara. Yes, sir. Right away. We have another mission. Well, Brian, I have a family emergency. I'll call you as soon as I get back. What kind of mission is this one? A cold one. Where? In Kalmekia. 
Kalmekia. Isn't that one of the little countries that broke off from Russia? Yeah. Let's get ready. Wow. That is gonna be a cold one, huh? Just think of Barbara. She'll keep you warm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 